bring on some other people and you have to bring on some skilled people uh, that can carry some of this burden for you. Um, you know, I don't know what the, the, the finances look like to be able to do that, but at some point you have to, you have to do that to grow because you can't keep the pace yeah, up. I figured that thing that you said about over delivering, so that really hit home because the thing is, I yeah. still get all my customer services web chat when there's a problem and deal with a customer. I still make sure that I have students who I deal with online. If there's a complaint, I'm still directly involved because I feel that we grew and we differentiated ourselves from the customers because of the service that we got. We'll help somebody even if they're studying the course with a competitor, but we'll just help them anyway if they need help with their assignment because then right. they'll actually refer their colleagues to us and if they want to do another course, they'll come back to us, right? So I learned that. So yeah, that works, but then that takes more of me. But then how do you control that over-delivery aspect as you start handing over more of the stuff to other people and <coughs> then trust them to have that dedication? I think that's a good, uh, that's actually a good point that I want to talk about. Uh, does anybody here have an employee that they need to get it rid of? I'll be just kind of blunt. Yeah? I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's a sensitive subject. Nobody likes to talk about it. But we all have got people sometimes that, that aren't pulling their weight. And we can't be afraid to make those changes that are right for the company. Because like you said, you've put everything into this. You're putting your heart and soul in it. Um, don't sit on somebody that you know is not right. Uh, make that move. Find the right team. It, it takes trial and error. And then we do a lot in our hiring process to sort of to mitigate that, to try to, to make a better decision. And when we do team hiring, I mean, we have the, the lowest person in the organization and the highest person in the organization. I like seeing how they're going to treat the lowest person, right? <clears throat> you know, we do. We test for the skills that they have on their CV. When they say they can do something, we make sure they can do it. Because when we scaled up, when we kind of exploded, <clears throat> we made a ton of hiring mistakes, a ton of them. Um, <clears throat> and it was brutal. And so many people will lie or misrepresent, let me put it that way, what they can do. The third is you call references from previous jobs. Social media, we check social media, so be careful what you post on social media. You know, it shocks me every time I open up LinkedIn and there's a picture of somebody shirtless or in a bikini <laughs> or, <clears throat> you know, their professional face or their professional photo is them at a party holding a beer or, you know, I mean, so, you know, uh, just be cognizant of that. And I mean, that's what we hire on. Um, I know that wasn't your question, but. Uh, it's a point that I did want to make. Um, you know, finding the right team is trial and error. It's, it's uh, using your network. Uh, maybe some of this you can outsource. Um, is it easy? No. And are people going to make mistakes? Yes. They're not going to do it and take care of it like you will, even if they're invested in what you're doing, even if uh, it's the best place to work in the world. Uh, they're still not going to treat it like you. Nobody could sell the toys like I could. Right, <clears throat> but at some point I couldn't do I couldn't do the schedule anymore. I couldn't keep the pace and continue to grow. Right, so at some point you have to figure out what that is, and I don't know what it is for you, but um, bringing on another you, finding another, you know, a partner. That's my sort of point. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Any other question? I'd say, you know, the businesses that, the, the, the things that I invest in, uh, I don't even look at the business plan to start with. If uh, I have three criteria, uh, I have to like the founders. Um, if I sit down over coffee with you, you know, look, let's face it, we make judgments about each other almost instantly with the way you look, the way you dress, and we do it subconsciously as people. Uh, we can't help it. We just do it. Um, 
However, I mean, I, I, I don't invest in people and, and, and I don't even look at the business plan first. Um, I'm looking at uh, whether you and I connect. Number two, um, do I like the idea? I don't invest in stuff I, that I'm not, I don't invest in something unless I'm fascinated by it, that I think it's really interesting. And number two. And then number three is, <clears throat> um, do, have they set up the structure? You know, the, the first thing I look at is, did they, do they have a history of their books? Do they have um, a good legal structure? I also like people that have gone all in, okay? I don't want to look at a business that's not probably already a year or two old. I want to make sure that the founders uh, have put every uh, bit of their own resources into the business and are starting to make it work and the, and the business is turning a corner and has potential for huge growth. And, and it's the reason I don't like the conversation around money and I, I, it drives me crazy when people say, I can't start my business until I get that, that, that VC or that, you know, that money that, that, that uh, influx of cash. <clears throat> I equate it to something like this. Uh, when I give my 13-year-old son, when I give him money, he gladly goes out and spends it. All right? When I make him earn it, he puts it in his pocket and he saves it. I think giving businesses money prematurely is bad for them. Um, what made us successful <clears throat> was that we mortgaged our cars and our houses and we put everything in and so we had to be, we had to watch every penny, every dime, every dollar and it, and it made us disciplined and that has served us well uh, from the very beginning. If we had, I mean I still have the same office chair I had back then, we don't go out and buy stuff when we need it um, or want it, want it. We, bit, we get stuff when we need it, we don't do stuff when we want it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's, I guess that's what I would say is it, it would, the business plan comes later, right? That, that's the, the first thing I look at is the people and the, and I know that's sort of a cliche, but it's true. Um, but when it comes to the business plan, I mean, I think people look at the, the numbers. I mean, the numbers tell the story. Words, words are nice, but the numbers, the numbers tell the story. Um, and I, it pains me to say that because I'm a words guy, I like to write. But I can write a nice story, but the numbers tell the truth. Yes? Um, Let's go here and then I'll come back. Yep. Okay. So, uh, during your journey, you said you did not pay yourself like, for a couple of years. Two years. Yeah. A uh, lot of, uh, of the entrepreneurs in this room have a lot of responsibilities at the same time and uh, might not be able to sort of sustain for uh, a, how is your journey of those two years, and what would you advise us? In well, I had, a, I had a wife and a kid on the way. Yeah. Um, look, I know you have social responsibilities, I know you have responsibilities, but I, I firmly believe you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. If you're 30 years old and you have to move back in with your parents, I know how painful that is but you have to do it. Because mom and dad will always feed you, right? <laughs> All right. Um, if you have to take that second job, or I've, uh, I've got a program friend, right, programmer right now, he's trying to, to do some other things, but he's good at programming. He's trying to build another business. He needs to take programming jobs while he has them and while he's, you know, he doesn't like them, but he's good at them and he's getting some of that business. And while he's trying to build his other business and support himself, he's got to do that. You know, it's, it takes away from what he's trying to build, but he's got to do that to sustain himself uh, and pay for food on the, on the table. Um, I just believe that you've got to make those sacrifices. I, I mean, I get the, the responsibilities, and I, I, I totally get it. Um, but there's always a way. It's not always the most pleasant way. Um, and, but that's why people quit, right? That's why there's such a high failure rate of, of businesses, because people get to that tough spot, and they don't want to go make that decision that they, they have to make to survive. It's easier to quit. I had an old, uh, I played American football growing up, 
and I had a, I had a coach at halftime. Um, and I remember the, the veins on the top of his head were, you know, when we were losing, uh, the veins on the top of his head would pop out of his head. He, he would be really mad. And he, he'd say to us, boys, you know, quitters never qu or winners never quit and quitters never win. Um, and that, I, that's kind of stuck with me. And so I, I, I'm just willing, I guess, to, to just go all in. I, um, and that's from my own psychology, because if I feel like I have a way to exit, um, it's, and it's the easy way, you know, uh, so. You had another one? Right. So we had companies in each country. Um, well, we, we distributed to 35 countries, so we weren't uh, set up in 35. Yeah, we were president in three. Um, so uh, we had a, a, an S corporation in the United States, um, and then in China, I don't remember what it was, but so we had corporations set up in all three. Uh, and so we, the transactions would be between those, those corporations, uh, and those were just, uh, it was, they and they were independent. They were all subsidiaries. All subsidiaries. Oh, okay. Yeah. The head company was in the yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a that's an area where I defer to, to the law on that. I just know it's it's really smart to get legal advice. The structure that you have, like, <clears throat> so you just have like managers who manage each region, or mm -hmm. present on the ground. So you have a uh, we, we had a, a I was the president.